Good morning. Uh, oh, thank you all for coming. Uh, welcome to the Pittsburgh Supercomputing Center uh, for the launch of Bridges, which is a new kind of supercomputer. It's enabling the national research community to make critical advances in our health energy efficiency, the economy, and the environment. Uh, the kind of supercomputing that we're describing is a transformative change, and it required a fundamental change in the way that we design supercomputers. Bridges introduces unprecedented coupling of big data to HPC. It integrates a very unusual variety of heterogeneous processors to enable applications across a wider space. And it gives us a uniquely flexible user and software environment in a range of applications. Um, gateways, which are web interfaces to various scientific domains, uh, things like neuroscience, um, genomics, are really democratizing. <coughs> they are letting domain researchers use bridges as HPC as a service without ever having to become programmers, computer experts, or even actually logging in. It's a very cloud-like paradigm. And this is game-changing. It's letting us advance science, reach out to a much broader community, and truly really onboard people who have never used a supercomputer before. One of our metrics for success is the degree to which we continue to onboard these new communities. It's off to a great start. In the introductory technical symposium this afternoon, we'll have several talks for those who can stay, and they're being captured also on YouTube, of such new communities. One led by University of Pittsburgh, uh, researcher Greg Cooper, and the CMU collaborator, is looking at causal discovery, understanding how to find cause and effect relationships in biomedical big data. And that can have real implications for us for cancer genomics, for chronic lung disease, and for brain dysfunction. In particular, Clark will show very recent results, working with an extremely high resolution data set from Rutgers University of understanding how functional units in our brains communicate. And the search space for that is overwhelming. Um, the search space for that problem is approximately 10 to the 3 billion power that we can find anything in that, I actually find rather startling. And yet there's a section, there's a selection of 10,350 edges in that graph that retain very well across data sets and analyses. So that's, I think it's very important. The other thing that Bridges is bringing together, aside from big data and HPC, is HPC, or high performance computing, for those who aren't familiar with the letters, and artificial intelligence. Um, this was a theme at the last November's SC conference, which is the world's premier conference in high-end computing. And the point there is how can we use AI, artificial intelligence, to not only enable new fields like speech recognition, um, video analysis, and other things, but how can we use it to advance the sciences that have been using supercomputers for many decades? and to make qualitative advances that are more adeptly driven than just more brute force. And so the second talk will be from Carnegie Mellon professor Florian Metz, looking at applying deep neural networks to time series analysis for speech recognition and natural language processing. So Bridges is the 18th supercomputer at PSC. We've had other smaller computers also. Uh, PSC itself has been around for 30 plus years. We're a joint project of Carnegie Mellon and the University of Pittsburgh. I think we're the first such joint project. There are others now. And I think it's a very valuable ongoing collaboration that capitalizes on the local expertise in the community. Uh, both are world-class research universities bringing together expertise in computer science, engineering, the life sciences, other physical sciences, business, policy, and other fields, all of which are now using Bridges. Now, Bridges began serving early users in February. Its 
phase one entered production in July. We had second phase to allow capture of new technology. That was all delivered on time in October. Users are now on that also. Uh, Bridges is now complete. Um, it was on time, in budget, and serving a very broad range of science across everywhere, uh, Western Pennsylvania, Pennsylvania, and across the United States. So with that, um, it's my pleasure to turn the program over to the, P the two founders of the Pittsburgh Serving Beings Center, uh, uh, Professors Mike Levine and Ralph Roskies, to continue the program. Uh, thanks, Nick. Uh, first, I'd like to uh, second uh, Nick's welcome to all of you who've uh, taken the time to join us today for the uh, Bridges launch. Uh, Bridges is not the largest system that PSC has designed and stood up for the national research community in our past, as Nick has read, something to 30, 31 years. But in many ways, uh, I think it's the most innovative. As you'll hear later today, particularly those of you who stay for the uh, technical discussions later in the day, its unique capabilities are already attracting and supporting a very wide range of research from uh, what the, we in the NSF call emerging communities, uh, quite in addition to providing valuable resources to more traditional forms of computationally intensive scientific research. Uh, at Carnegie Mellon University, the Pittsburgh Supercomputing Center lies within the Mellon College of Science, and we report to our new dean, Rebecca Jort. Jort, yes, who is, pardon me, yes, who is here joining us today, George, who's up, uh, and your own, your research areas, as it happens, actually make use of the kinds of things that, uh, that Bridges was designed to do, and thanks for joining us. Uh, in turn, Dean Dorge, uh, and through her, the PSC, a report to CMU's new, but not quite so new, uh, provost, Farnam Jahanian, who has agreed to say a few words today. And uh, there you are. <laughs> uh, I knew you were very active uh, in many areas of research, startup creation, and public policy, but I was reading up on, uh, on you last night for this introduction, and I had no idea how active and productive you have been. Uh, my comment, I didn't ask Ralph, but he probably agrees, is uh, my impression that although Ralph and I think we work hard, compared to you, I, I feel like we've been sleepwalking for the last 30 years. Uh, organizationally, uh, Farnham, Farnham's been all over. <laughs> he started and got his master's and PhD degrees at, in computer science at the University of Texas in Austin. Uh, you've had uh, sort of uh, experience with corporate research and management at uh, the Watson Labs of IBM. Uh, and at, while at the University of Michigan, you created and led, led a, a large number of important research projects, spun off corporations, and served for four years at the, uh, N at the NSF leading size, which is their computer science and engineering directorate. Uh, which is PSC's, which has been PSC's largest supporter over the years, and served on or led a larger number of government advisory committees than, uh, than you could remember if I were to list them all. So, uh, and now he's at CMU, and in addition to being vice president, having been vice president for research, he serves as provost, and if I read it correctly, you're, you also are in three of the Cuyahoga appointments in three colleges. Uh, Ralph, we're not working hard enough. Uh, so from networking to cyber infrastructure, computing and information processing, Farnham has played an important role at the national level in nearly every activity that we pursue at the PSC. And I think you probably understand PSC uh, better than Ralph and I do. So it's my great honor and pleasure to introduce Farnham Dehanian. Thanks. Thank you very much, Michael, for that kind introduction. Um, good morning, everyone. Um, as uh, Michael mentioned, I did have the honor of serving at the National Science Foundation uh, for several years before coming to Carnegie Mellon. So 
Uh, the work that we're going to talk about today and the launch of Bridges is close to my heart uh, from an intellectual point of view and also a sense of pride to see uh, that this has been launched at uh, CMU. It is my pleasure to be here with you at the Pittsburgh Supercomputing Center uh, to, for the launch of the NSF-funded Bridges program. Uh, today, we're not only going to celebrate this uh, program's remarkable uh, potential to facilitate and activate transformative research, but also recognize and thank many partners that have made this uh, possible for us. I'll say a few words about that. I do want to begin by thanking Michael, Ralph, and Nick for their leadership and also for hosting this event. Thank you very much. I also want to acknowledge our friends and partners at University of Pittsburgh. Uh, sometimes you don't really know which department on your college you're in because there's just such seamless interaction between Carnegie Mellon and University of Pittsburgh, and we're blessed to have such wonderful colleagues at, at Pitt who work with us. Uh, John Cooper, from whom you'll hear, Dean of Dietrich uh, School of Arts and Sciences with us. Uh, Art Levine, a Dean of uh, Medical School, a great friend and a, and a great collaborator is with us. Uh, we have a couple of Carnegie Mellon deans also here with us. You heard Rebecca Dorge, who, was, who is our new Dean of Mellon College of Science, who joined us just last year. And I saw Keith Webster, who is our Dean of uh, our Libraries at Carnegie Mellon. We're happy to have all of you with us. Uh, I'm particularly pleased uh, uh, to tell you that this center wouldn't be possible without the support, of course, of the National Science Foundation. Private sector, private industry, and of course, our state and local and municipal leaders who are with us today. We're honored to have so many of them with us. I'm very pleased, of course, to have my dear friend and former colleague at the National Science Foundation, Irene Coulters, with us. Irene and I uh, uh, did some great work together, I think, at NSF uh, for several years. Uh, uh, and uh, she's also, as you will hear, is an amazing uh, scholar and influencer and, and a leader in uh, cyber infrastructure in the country. And she's, of course, a director of Advanced Cyber Infrastructure Division uh, at NSF in the, in the Directorate of Computer Information Science and Engineering. I also want to thank our partners uh, from city, state, and, and local government, as well as our industry collaborators. Uh, we have Aaron, who is the uh, director of Governor's Southwest Regional Office with us. Thank you for joining us. Uh, Rich Fitzgerald, a great friend of Carnegie Mellon and Pitt, our uh, county executive is also with us. Uh, Mayor Peduto, uh, who will be joining us, of course, Mayor of Pittsburgh. Bill Mannell from uh, HP Enterprises and Chris Allison from Intel who are here. You know, one thing I want to tell you, I'm, I'm relatively new to Pittsburgh, not so new anymore. This is my third year here in Pittsburgh. Well, I have said this in numerous occasions. What's remarkable about this city and this state is the public-private partnership between government, industry, and academia, not only to accelerate the rate of innovation and create enormous opportunities for scholars, researchers, they also provide significant benefit to the region and to the nation. Uh, in fact, just a couple of weeks ago, uh, Rich and I and our mayor were, uh, were at Pentagon for the launch of uh, the new Robotics Manufacturing Institute, which is going to be based here in Pittsburgh. So the impact, without any doubt, is local, regional, and national. The innovation ecosystem that we have here in Pittsburgh is particularly unique. This city has a remarkable alignment of support and, more, and, and, and motivation from our civic leaders, from our public uh, sector and the private sector leadership to invest in continued growth, especially in areas having to do with healthcare, technology, many areas that are creating essentially jobs across this region. This alliance is due in part to a large part to the people in this room and the leadership that we have in this town and in the state. Bill, Rich, and Aaron, and our partners in Harrisburg and beyond are, of course, our partners from Intel and, and HP. Let's please join me in thanking all of them for everything that they do. Thank you. A few words about PSC, and, and, and as all of you know, for three decades, the PSC has served as a top high-performance computing and networking center in the area, providing university, government, and industry researchers with access to many of the most powerful systems available. It has provided support 
an extraordinary scientific achievement over the uh, last several decades, making it a significant contributor not only to CMU and Pitt, as well as the region, of course, the country and international high performance uh, computing community. Uh, so many of these remarkable accomplishments can be attributed to the leadership of PFC. As Patty Beeson, uh, the provost at uh, Pitt, and I announced uh, this last July, this is Ralph and Michael's uh, last year as co-directors uh, of PSC. I want to take a moment to express my deep appreciation, the community's deep appreciation, for the exceptional stewardship and leadership over the last uh, 30 years. Let's thank you. As a computer scientist, I've said this numerous times, and honestly, just being in Pittsburgh and, and working at CMU and collaborating with Pitt, uh, this is even more prominent. It's front and center, as everyone in this room knows too well. Um, um, this is a rapid, this is a significant and rapidly changing time for our technology driven and information based economy. We're entering a new era of science and engineering that's anchored by an era of observation and transformed by this new era of computation and data. To embrace, embrace this new paradigm, we rely on the U.S. science and engineering innovation ecosystem at the, as the bedrock of our economic prosperity and national security. At the epicenter of this is the National Science Foundation that's providing support in cyber infrastructure, in basic research, in so many areas to engage the scientific curiosity of literally millions of scientists, engineers, researchers, and educators across every sector of our economy, from transportation to healthcare to energy to education and so on. Access to this advanced cyber infra infrastructure, including uh, what you will hear about today, the bridges, including computational resources, uh, storage capabilities, high-speed networks, and software, has increasingly become a critical component of the science and engineering ecosystem. In this new era, pushed by the advances that we see in computation, in algorithms, data-intensive approaches, and pulled by expanding complexity, <laughs> scope, and scale of today's national and global priorities, we have a unique opportunity to accelerate the pace of discovery and innovation in nearly all fields of inquiry. With investments like Bridges, we're delivering remarkable and measurable improvements to the research process and empowering the academic community with the computational tools and data-enabled approaches that they need to answer fundamental questions, <coughs> extract knowledge, drive discovery and decision-making, and make accurate predictions and ga gain deeper understanding of causal relationships. What does all of this flexibility and convenience of high-performance computing and, and uh, data-centric systems provide, such as, such as bridges? In short, it allows us to catalyze discoveries and insight scarcely, scarcely conceivable even two decades ago. Just to give you a couple of examples. By integrating biomedical, clinical, scientific data, we can predict onset of diseases and identify, for example, unwanted drug interactions. By accurately predicting natural disasters such as hurricanes and tornadoes, we can employ life-saving and preventative measures that mitigate their potential impact. By correlating disparate data streams from various sources through text mining and image analysis and face recognition and data mining, we can enhance public safety. And these are just some of the examples of what's possible through access to computational approaches and data intensive approaches. Not only Bridges has expanded the realm of possibility, will expand the realm of possibilities, it will also facilitate closer collaboration between Carnegie Mellon and University of Pittsburgh in emerging areas such as the National Center for Multiscale Modeling of Biological Systems, which is a joint effort of or effort that relies heavily on PSCs to supply rigorous computational approaches to understanding of biological systems. I want to give you one more example, which is pretty relevant. We all hear about artificial intelligence, of course, these days. Um, uh, and, and implications of artificial intelligence and autonomy and so on has, of course, been discussed quite a bit nationally, and Carnegie Mellon and University of Pittsburgh and City of Pittsburgh are right in the middle of all of that. In fact, as we speak today, 
there's a tournament going on at the Rivers Casino <laughs> that pits a program developed by my colleague Tomas Sandholm, uh, an accomplished uh, computer scientist, and, uh, and, and, the, and his colleagues at the, our School of Computer Science against top human poker players. Thanks to Bridges, this program computes endgame strategies for each hand, sharpening the AI's strategy, and it's a very adaptive system, it's not a static system. This system will serve actually as a model, it has broad applications, it will serve as a model for countless real world problems in which adversaries attempt to hide information and bluff each other. So we will have direct implications and broad implications in a lot of applications. You can use your imaginations, uh, imagination in terms of those applications. Another example is uh, Bridges empowering an investigation by Jay App at Carnegie Mellon in the Department of Engineering and Public Policy into the role of behind the meter battery storage in the national electrical grid. And the list goes on and on. To wrap up, I'm extremely proud and, and pleased to be here that to, to share with you that Pittsburgh and CMU, the University of Pittsburgh and CMU, are leading the world in big data and technology, technologically driven solutions to complex real world challenges. And Pittsburgh Supercomputing Center is undoubtedly a significant agent catalyzing our continued success in this domain. I want to once again thank all of you for allowing me to be part of this event. This is truly an exciting launch and I look forward to celebrating the future achievements made possible by this unprecedented resources of advanced, powerful, and robust computing. Thank you very much. So I'm Ralph Roskies and uh, I'd like to second the welcome that Michael extended to all of you for coming here. Uh, we at the Supercomputing Center shamelessly build on the strength of both universities as you've heard and uh, it's my pleasure to uh, introduce Dean John Cooper who will be representing uh, say a few words on behalf of the university. So John is the Betty J and Ralph E. Bailey Dean of the Diedrich School of Arts and Sciences at the University of Pittsburgh. He was born in Lurgan, Northern Ireland. He studied at Oxford. He got an undergraduate degree, a graduate degree there. Then he went to Harvard, worked as a postdoc, an assistant professor, an associate professor. And in 1986, which coincides with the year that the supercomputing center got off the ground, uh, he came to Pitt as professor of chemistry and <clears throat> became chair of the department and in 1998 became dean of uh, what is now the Dietrich School of Arts and Sciences at Pitt. He's received many honors including a Sloan Foundation Fellowship, the Cordray Morgan Medal of the Royal Society of Chemistry, published nearly 100 scientific articles and I just learned that he supervised his 26th doctoral dissertation degree of his, uh, of his career. Uh, under Cooper's leadership, the School of Arts and Sciences strengthened its position as the liberal arts, liberal arts heart of, of the major university at Pitt. He's emphasized recruitment, development of a strong and diverse faculty, and this has been reflected in significant growth of external sponsorship of research projects at Pitt. I report to him in my role as uh, the co-scientific director of the Pittsburgh Supercomputing Center, and he has been a constant friend of PSC throughout his tenure at, as dean, and it's my pleasure to call on him to say a few words on behalf of Pitt. Uh, report is a little generous. He gives me an annual sort of snapshot. And I sit back in awe and try to figure out what's going on and, and write something nice. Um, but he, it, it is, uh, it's my very great pleasure to be here to represent the University of Pittsburgh, in particular our Chancellor uh, Patrick Gallagher, who uh, unfortunately had a long scheduled uh, meeting out of town today. I hope it's in Harrisburg. Uh, uh, strengthening our level of Commonwealth support, uh, but um, I'm not actually quite sure. <laughs> um, the, uh, 
This truly has been a collaborative exercise, uh, PSC, throughout its 30 years history. And um, the ties, because it's sort of housed at Carnegie Mellon, um, it's not always as obvious to the community just how deep and strong the engagement of the University of Pittsburgh is with the uh, with PSC. Um, and uh, that obviously in a, one sense is symbolized by Ralph's role as the co-director um, and the, uh, uh, together with Mike and his colleagues have brought in 18 successive uh, supercomputings of different size. But another uh, sort of nice level it was, of course, the uh, uh, Nick Nystrom, who is the PI of this particular proposal, and he is, of course, a PhD graduate of my home department of chemistry at the University of Pittsburgh. So we are very deeply engaged with this, and uh, in fact, uh, chemistry in the days when modeling was the main business was by far the largest, I believe, uh, Pittsburgh area user of the PSC. Uh, this new generation of computer, um, as was emphasized by those more knowledgeable than I, uh, really is a different sort of generation uh, targeted on making, introducing user friendliness and allowing people to do, access these sorts of computational resources from very straightforward, simple day-to-day -day machines. And a core audience for that has to be the bi biomedical sciences, uh, represented here by Art Levine, who we're delighted to see present. Um, and Pitt, of course, does have great strength, both on the arts and sciences side and on the School of Medicine side uh, in biomedical sciences. So um, one of the sorts of uh, projects, well, ma major class of projects, are those that involve genomic analysis. And genomic analysis is an amazing field because it's one of those fields where we now have these vast, vast quantities of data. And how do you translate data into knowledge, understanding, and ways of improving human circumstance? This uh, program, uh, this setup, is about doing that. And to support that, for example, uh, Mike Bishich from Pitt led the acquisition of dedicated storage, promoted, supported by CMU for the big data for better health collaboration, that really leverages the use of Pitt for computing in the biomedical sciences. Uh, Rebecca Jacobson and Uma Chandran are employing uh, bridges to make vast amounts of the cancer genome atlas data available to researchers. And thanks in part to the vast storage and computational capacities of bridges, local researchers will be able to draw and analyze genomic uh, big data in a web-based user-friendly interface. And it is going to take away the need to be able to write HPC code in order to access those databases. Um, you know, I was very pleased to note that Greg Pitt, another Pitt faculty, Greg Cooper, another Pitt faculty member, is leading off in today's, this afternoon's talks with the Center for Causal Discovery. Um, and there are many more <coughs> interesting opportunities that will emerge over the years. I suspect that Yvette Bahar's Department of Computational Biology will be uh, a leading participant in that and delighted that she's here today. I did want to also emphasize that uh, the chancellor, our new chancellor, uh, Pat Gallagher, uh, is extremely committed to the importance of big data and computational support. And uh, that PSC is clearly a very important component of the tools and resources available within this. But he is also uh, engaged in trying to add a new layer of organization to what is referred to as this ecosystem through creating a uh, senior vice chancellor for research. And the, that person, whoever he or she is, will be drawing heavily on PSC as Pitt moves forward with this engagement uh, with all of these areas of science. I would like to, on behalf of Pitt, also uh, thank and welcome the uh, regional partners, uh, Rich Fitzgerald, the governor's office, 
uh, the NSF, who have been so critical in the support um, over all of these years, um, and, and welcome everybody to this event. And I'm looking forward to watching many years of more stunning success. Thank you very much. Okay, um, thank you. So um, I would second all of the, um, the thanks to the people in this room. Uh, some of you I don't know, most of you I do. Um, the remainder of the program this morning recognizes that Bridges and the PSC really are a project that benefits the nation, the region. Um, we have speakers here from the National Science Foundation whose support has been invaluable now for three decades. Um, and also from the state of Pittsburgh, the state of Pennsylvania, and from our vendor partners in this. So I'd like to take one step back. Um, we've mentioned them in the previous introductions. So Bridges were made possible in part by our vendor partnership <coughs> relationship with Hewlett Packard Enterprise, who is our prime integrator for bringing the system together. Uh, with them, we were able to imagine, based on what users need, what sort of architecture we would want to put out there, and then actually realize it through a very deep line of servers. What I didn't go into in this talk because we don't have much time is technologically what Bridges is. So it is a supercomputer. Um, its peak capacity is measured in the supercomputing world, we think in terms of things called flops or floating point operations per second. So it is 1.35 petaflops, which is roughly the speed of about 7,500 top-end laptops put together, all working on one problem at once. Its aggregate storage is about 10, I'm sorry, aggregate is about 17 petabytes, which is 10,000 top-of-the-line, two terabyte laptop drives. To be able to think of harnessing all of that together, uh, Bridges is the first system in the world that had the new Intel OmniPath architecture interconnect. And that's really significant. That goes to conversations we've had with Intel Co Corporation for quite some time. And the objective there was to really bring together the first place in the world that people can bring together this state-of-the-art interconnect, that's what connects servers together, delivering the highest possible bandwidth, the best possible performance for real world applications. And then integrating that with a storage system the PSC designed around their own file systems to make big data available to all the compute processors <coughs> very quickly all the time. And so for that, our vendors made that possible. And those are Hewlett Packard Enterprise, who will say a few words later this morning, um, Intel Corporation, and NVIDIA, who is not here but we're very thankful for all of that. So I'd like to transition now to um, Irene Qualters of the National Science Foundation. Um, one person who could not be here and who we sorely miss is Bob Chaddock. Uh, Bob is the program officer for Bridges, and his presence is missed, but because work must come first, he's in Washington doing the responsibilities that he has to do today. Uh, but we miss his presence. So Irene is Director of the Office of Advanced Cyber Infrastructure within NSF's Computer and Information Science and Engineering Directorate, or SIZE. And as Michael noted, SIZE has been the primary source of funding for the large systems of PSC. We also have large systems funded by, we had them funded by NIH and other sponsors. Right now we host Anton2, which is a unique system for doing protein folding and understanding very long time processes in biology. Um, that is an arrangement with David E. Shaw Research or DESRES. And for all of these, they work very nicely together. We'll go into some more detail on that later in the day. So Irene uh, leads the Office of Advanced Cyber Infrastructure. Its mission to support and coordinate prototyping, development, acquisition, and provisioning of state-of-the-art cyber infrastructure, resources, tools, and services that are really essential to the advancement of science and engineering across the country. 
Uh, she's been in that position since April of 2014. Prior to that, which actually you began NSF, I think, in 2009, um, you had a distinguished 30-year career in industry where we knew you from some of that. Um, Irene worked in executive leadership in the technology sector, um, including 20 years at Cray Research, where we first met you, at least I first met you. Uh, you participated in the development of the first commercially successful auto vectorizing compiler. And these are software tools to help users take advantage of modern hardware, which is always advancing. The first multiprocessor version of Unix, which is the operating system that we all are using now. And Cray's landmark massively <laughs> parallel computer, the Cray T3E, which we had is a very early incarnation. And PSC pioneered the way in massively parallel processing and now are doing so in these new paradigms of merging uh, different hardware and software frameworks to make computing much more usable, much more broadly applicable, and to serve applications moving forward. For six years, Irene then went on as vice president and led information systems at Merck Research Labs. Again, look at very applied science, focusing on international cyber infrastructure to advance all phases of pharmaceutical R&D. Early in PSC's history, pharmaceuticals were important here also. Irene led is an expert in parallel computing system architecture and a wide variety of software development arenas from scientific applications <coughs> to file systems and operating systems. And so it's my pleasure to introduce Irene Qualters of NSF. Good morning, everyone. Uh, thank you, Nick. On behalf of the National Science Foundation, I'm pleased to join Carnegie Mellon University Provost Farnham Jahanian, whom I know well, uh, University of Pittsburgh Dean Cooper, and all of you today to formally launch the Bridges system. I want to begin by thanking everyone today for your individual and your collective contributions to the development and deployment of Bridges here at PSC. Since the center's beginning in 1986, supported as one of NSF's original supercomputer centers, it has provided uh, capabilities to more than 30,000 researchers across the nation, many of whom were students as well. The work at PSC enables discovery at the frontiers in fields as diverse as biomedical science, public safety, cybersecurity, and in turn contributes to the economic prosperity and security of the U.S. For example, the first realistic 3D computational model of blood flow in a human heart was produced at PSC, and this model has helped to inform the design of artificial heart valves, tech, a technology that is surgically implanted in over 100,000 people in the U.S. each year. The launch of Bridges today demonstrates that continued success for PSC. Very early use of Bridges has allowed researchers to tackle challenges such as direct numerical simulations of flow interactions between water and carbon dioxide on three-dimensional rock images, large-scale agent-based modeling of influenza vaccine and policy, and uh, as Farna mentioned, developing more effective machine learning algorithms for complicated decision making based on imperfect information, poker in the, in the immediate, <laughs> but with really wide applicability for the future. In fact, Bridges was recognized uh, recently by HPC Wire, uh, Editor's Choice for the Best Data Intensive System, uh, uh, End User Focused. And this award is really uh, a sign of PS6, PSC's success uh, built upon sustained leadership and continuous innovation through successful collaborations that have already been mentioned. These two were recently in evidence when PSC won another award, the Reader's HPC Wired Reader's Choice Award, for the best use of high performance data analytics for its ongoing use in reconstructing the microscopic 
Architecture of the Brain, again a collaboration with Harvard and the Allen Institute for Brain Science. Bridges adds unique data and computational intensive performance to the nation's cyber infrastructure ecosystem through its highly capable Intel Omnipath network, Fabric its dedicated nodes for persistent databases, its rich set of familiar user tool, and its capable staff. It is ripe for research explorations that demand dynamic access to data-centric computing. This system will bridge capabilities, allowing researchers to use both computational modeling and data analysis at scale, addressing a key objective for the future of our nation's computing ecosystem. Already, Bridges is being used to advance research in genomics, public health, and in machine learning. The remarkable system performance of Bridges and its unique capabilities have been enabled through a number of partnerships catalyzed and fostered by PSC. I want to acknowledge Carnegie Mellon University, the University of Pittsburgh, and the city, regional, and state partnerships. I also want to acknowledge Hewlett Packard Enterprise, Intel, and NVIDIA. They have been outstanding partners in ensuring powerful performance for data and memory intensive computation. And I want to acknowledge the participation and collaboration with the Exceed organization, which provides essential community support, including uh, managing the allocations for bridges. And before I close, I want to finally acknowledge Nick and the entire team here at PSC for your dedication, your talent, and your unique combination of technology foresight, operational expertise, and deep understanding of scientific algorithms and workflows. Thank you for continuing PSE's long tradition of engaging, training, and promoting the efforts of tomorrow's and today's science and engineers. In addition, I'd like to acknowledge Bob Chaddick, um, the Bridges Program Director, who manages the NSF grant to Bridges and sends his best wishes to you all today. And I um, would also uh, like to acknowledge uh, Al Suarez, who's here in the audience today, who joined me. Um, hopefully, the two of us can make up for Bob's uh, uh, <laughs> absence. So thank you very much. Um, thank you, Irene. So I'd note um, you had mentioned um, training. So a few other numbers are relevant. I just looked up the current numbers for Bridges this morning. And at the moment, we have 658 active projects engaged in doing research here. That's over 2,500 individual users. Many of those are students. One thing that's very important in technology, in science, in high performance computing is workforce development. And we need we all hear that we need more expertise in data science, in people thinking critically, in understanding how to do analyses, how to interpret results, and how to innovate and move us forward. Um, that's especially true for the state. Uh, we have many students involved in bridges all the way down to the undergraduate and even high school levels. And we're hoping that many of them will stay in the area and advance Pittsburgh and Pennsylvania as a region. So now I'd like to introduce Aaron Mulchaney, who is director of the Governor's, Governor's Southwest Regional Office. Um, Aaron was appointed in 2005 to serve as director of the Southwest Office for Governor Tom Wolf. In his capacity, um, she assists with communication, communities and stakeholders by representing the governor and serving it as his liaison in 16 counties within southwestern Pennsylvania. Prior to working in the Wolf administration, uh, Aaron was elected to the Pennsylvania House of Representatives, where she served from 2013 to 2014. During her tenure in the PA House, Representative Mulchaney represented the 26th, 22nd sorry, legislative district in Allegheny County prior to redistricting. She was a member of several standing committees of the House, including the Education Committee, Consumer Affairs, Committee and the Human Services Committee. 
uh, Representative Mulch Cheney also served on the PA House's Bipartisan and Bicameral Equality Caucus, Women's Health Caucus, and co-chaired the Life Sciences Caucus. So I'm sure you can appreciate some of what we're trying to do. Um, she was an outspoken advocate for Act 89, Pennsylvania's Transportation Infrastructure Bill, which was passed in 2014. And she is most proud of introducing the Pay Equity Act, House Bill 1890, which called for equal pay for equal work. It was something I think is obvious, but it's valuable to actually get it done. Um, Erin was a graduate of Duquesne University, where re she received a BA in journalism with a minor in business administration. Following graduation, Erin um, began a 12 year career in the nonprofit sector before entering public service. She owns a home in Pittsburgh's Mount Washington neighborhood, where she's lived for the la last 19 years. I just want to say before turning it over, we definitely appreciate Pennsylvania's support. Um, we've had some very interesting conversation on ways forward, and I think we should continue exploring. Thank you. Uh, thanks for that introduction, Nick. I, I really appreciate it. It's always interesting to hear your, your biography. <laughs> Uh, sitting here, but um, you know, I, I am Erin Mulchaney. I'm the director of the governor's Southwest Regional Office, and it's really um, an honor to be here this morning, um, representing Governor Tom Wolf. Obviously, he could not be here this morning, um, but um, I am always happy to stand in for exciting announcements like the launch of Bridges. And I want to just take a moment, and I want to thank um, all of the partners who who made this possible and who who participate in this kind of work. Um, you know, from our universities, University of Pittsburgh and Carnegie Mellon University, um, up through the National Science Foundation, um, and of course at our city and county level with County Executive Fitzgerald and Mayor Peduto. Um, you know, the governor is always uh, thrilled to be at that table. So thank you for including us in your work and, uh, and your continued partnership. Um, the Launch of Bridges uh, keeps Pennsylvania among the foremost centers of research computing in the nation, which is always something worth talking about. Um, it's the Commonwealth's only NSF-funded academic supercomputing center over the last 30 years, bringing $15 of funding into the state for every dollar invested by the legislature in PSC. Um, the new system, Bridges, will um, make more computational power available to state companies, um, schools, and agencies, which is always a good thing. Um, somebody. One of the other speakers uh, mentioned improving the human condition, and I can't think of a better place to start than working with public sector partners on that endeavor. Um, and in addition to the educational infrastructure e efforts already mentioned, Bridges will contribute to the state's small to medium-sized manufacturing base by putting data and computing resources um, at their disposal. That would only normally something that would only be normally available to the largest corporations. So, um, on behalf of Governor Wolf. I just want to um, reiterate the congratulations and thank you on the launch of Bridges. And of course, um, the governor looks forward to working with you uh, on all of the amazing things that you do um, within our universities and with the National Science Foundation. Um, and with that, I want to take a moment and introduce um, one of our uh, collaborative partners here at the county level. Um, you know. The governor regularly is in discussions with the county and the city, obviously Mayor Peduto and uh, County Executive Rich Fitzgerald. Um, I'm sure that we all recognize that when our uh, municipal, county, state, and federal level officials are working together, we can accomplish great things um, like bridges. So um, with that, I do want to introduce uh, Carnegie Mellon alumni, um, our County Executive uh, Rich Fitzgerald. Thank you, Aaron. And on behalf of uh, Allegheny County, thank Governor Wolf. He has been an absolutely terrific partner on so many things that we do in this region and how important they are. Um, and uh, yes, I am a CMU grad. My wife is a Pitt grad, so <laughs> mergers happen in Allegheny County. Uh, and I mentioned the Farnham. It's, it's really great that the computer can win at poker. But um, I asked him if next year we could have him deploy the Steelers' defensive backs <laughs> against Tom Brady and figure that out. If we could figure that out and win that one, we'd be good at that. 
We are so fortunate in this region to have, you know, two great leaders at, at our two of our universities, uh, President Suresh uh, and Pat Gallagher, both of whom, and, and their folks who are here today. Um, and I see uh, Senator Casey's office joining us here today. Thank you, Liz. Appreciate that. Um, and it is the, the federal, state, local, governmental, but working with. Um, some of our, you know, our great universities, and to have you know Dr. Gallagher and Dr. Suresh, who were at NSF and NIST, and in, in, in the federal with you know people like Farnham, um, Dr. Levine, one of the great medical schools right here in Pittsburgh, the great data that's happening, and the partnership that they've been with us at the governmental level. When Mayor Peduto and I, with the University of Pittsburgh, started the regional data center just a couple of years ago, how do we make government services? Uh, used and deployed more efficiently. We all know we've got to do more with less um, as we have limited government resources. So their partnership and the partnership of CMU with Traffic 21, Iran Transit, uh, health data, I mean, it's so many different things that we try to deploy our resources in a, in a much more data-driven decision operation. So we're just grateful to be here working with, with all of the partners. It's great to have Intel and Hewlett Packard as well as great partners being part of, you know, the private sector. I see Bill Flanagan here from the uh, Allegheny Conference. Uh, the Allegheny Conference and the business community, again, such great partners with, with all the folks that we're working with. So I want to congratulate Nick, uh, Dr. Levine, Dr. Cooper, um, Farnham, and, you, and your team, really. We're, we're so fortunate here in this region to have all these folks that are they're moving so many things forward in, in such a good way. I also want to thank Irene and NSF. Uh, you guys have been just great, great partners to, to work with. So thank you for, for the federal government. You know, Aaron from the governor's office talked about the, the leveraging of how many dollars are invested privately with the with the with the uh, center that we do, and again, bridges. As we're sitting in the city of bridges, is so appropriate. Um, we are a bridge to to technology, to 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 different communities, and it's very important. So, with that, I know he can't make it here today, Governor. Governor, I didn't make him governor yet. <laughs> Mayor Peduto, um, I know when we have, you know, the, the weather starts to change, gets gets called away, but uh, we do have his one of someone from his office who's been a great partner with us when it comes to data and regional data center and all the things we do from the from uh, Mayor Peduto's office. We have Alex Bazichanix. Alex, you want to come up? Uh, thank you. Uh, I'm honored to be here. I, I again sincerely apologize. To the mayor's not able to attend today. Uh, my team, along with the Department of Innovation and Performance uh, at the city, have been working closely with the Supercomputing Center uh, as we take on the often Sisyphusian task of uh, modernizing our infrastructure, uh, both information-based and, and physical. Uh, as we stand up our new Department of Mobility and Infrastructure in the city in, in 2017, uh, we're going to lean even more heavily on, on that capability. Uh, when the city entered the Smart City Challenge uh, that the U.S. Department of Transportation hosted last year, uh, the Supercomputing Center was a big part of why our application was so competitive uh, and why we were named one of seven finalists out of 78 total applications. Uh, the Supercomputing Center really helped the city uh, punch above its weight class. Um, now, you know, as, as we transform our technology in the city, we're entering a new age with an unprecedented level of connectivity uh, and collecting of data. Um, and we'll have a leg up on other cities both around the country and around the world uh, as a result of having this connectivity and having the supercomputing center here. Um, you know, the city's going to work closely with researchers at, at Pitt, CMU, and others uh, to tackle our biggest problems using uh, the Bridges platform, uh, things like gridlock, uh, public safety, service delivery, uh, and the only thing that Pittsburghers hate more than the Patriots, uh, the potholes. Um, <laughs> You know, the Supercomputing Center to us represents, uh, and Bridges in particular, represent all the things that make the city work well. Uh, collaboration, innovation, democratization, uh, and creativity. The mayor likes to talk about how the city of Pittsburgh is small enough that you can get people into a room uh, and make a decision, uh, and big enough that when you do, the world takes notice. Uh, I think the Supercomputing Center is the perfect example uh, of how that works in action, uh, and we're looking forward to seeing the results and being a part of the results. Thank you. Okay, uh, thank you very much. So uh, with that, the next speakers are from Hewlett Packard Enterprise and Intel Corporation. I'd like to introduce both in succession just to keep things moving this morning. So uh, first up is Bill Minnell, who is Vice President and General Manager for HPC and Artificial Intelligence 
at Hewlett Packard Enterprise. And Bill, just your title, I think, resonates with Bridges' mission of bringing together HPC and AI and big data, because these are all folded together. Uh, Bill is VP and general manager of HPC and AI, as I said. He's been at HPE for a little bit over two years. Prior to that, he was at Silicon Graphics, or SGI, for 25 years in a variety of roles, culminating as general manager for SGI's um, very innovative compute and storage business. For those who aren't aware, recently HPE acquired SGI. And so that, that underscores how important these technologies are, how complementary they are, and how they're coming together with bridges, especially around areas like very, very large memory with up to 12 terabytes of RAM within a node. Uh, prior to going to SGI, uh, Bill worked at NASA as a flight systems engineer and a U.S. Air Force officer working on structural engineering research and development. He has a BS in mechanical engineering and material science from Duke and an MBA from Cal State San Jose. After Bill will be Chris Allison, who is someone at Intel Corporation with whom we've also worked for many years. Chris is an HPC specialist at Intel's data center group technical sales team. He's worked with universities around the country and is based in Austin, Texas. So, Bill. Excuse me one moment. I forgot we have slides here. Uh, if you'd like to begin, I'll get these off. I'll go ahead and start, uh, and start talking. So, so thank you everyone for being here today. And on behalf of Hewlett Packard Enterprise, we're so excited to be a part of this launch. And we've had a very long partnership with uh, Pittsburgh Supercomputing Center and Ralph and Michael and also Nick as well. And as uh, Nick mentioned, uh, my previous company, SGI, is, is uh, Hewlett Packard Enterprise's latest acquisition. But before that, we also acquired Digital and also Compact. And these were also companies very closely aligned with Pittsburgh Supercomputer Center. So one thing I, I, I will have to say is I have a global role. So I, uh, I, I travel the world. I talk to a lot, of, a lot of different supercomputing centers, a lot of different customers around the world, whether they're in the commercial space, whether they're in the government space or the academic space. And Pittsburgh Supercomputing Center always comes up as a model for, for how they, they interact with industry, with cross-government and so forth, and also a leader in terms of supercomputing. So, so congratulations, everyone here, for being a part of that and being so world-renowned from that perspective. Um, you know, one thing I, I would like to mention here is that this system is actually unique. And Nick, Nick talked a bit about this. And in, in the world of high-performance computing, which is, which is my world, basically, uh, there's a lot of systems out there that focus a lot on the compute end of things. Um, however, um, this particular system actually tries to blend in not only compute, but big data. Big data and artificial intelligence. How do you get value out of all that data that's now a part of our lives? And at Hewlett Packard Enterprise, we actually call that the idea economy. You know, so this is really where data itself becomes a center of everything we do. So we've got billions of connected devices, petabytes of data out there, and if we don't get any value out of it, it's, it's just all a waste of our time and money, right? So, so I, think, uh, I think the Bridges computer itself is a great example of some of the things that are happening out there. And so again, uh, and I wanted to show these slides, not so much because I wanted to sell you something, but actually to show you that this is really what the world is about. And, and uh, the Bridges system is really talking about what people are, are uh, knowing that they need to do. How do they get value out of all this big data? That's not quite working, so I'll just do page down like work a little. Okay. Um, you know, so, so again, um, it's all about HPC and big data. So, so if you've been in HPC for a long time, you know we've been talking about big data for a while, and it's really gotten popular of late in most enterprise and, and uh, other areas as well. So, so it's how we interface those together, how we get value out of them, and really it comes to empowering the data-driven organization. So how can we go about doing that? How can we do that better? And some of the technology that's here in Bridges uh, breaks some of those barriers between 
of the data, how do you analyze it, how do you create it, and how do you move forward with it as well. And what we're seeing is you see the HPC market on this side is a number of trends that are going on there, more compute, more capability, people doing more of it. And the big data market over there, which is you know more data sources, much more data, volume of data just, just sort of not stopping, and, and the need for real-time analytics as well. And you see this HPC and big data convergence in the middle. You know, that's the thing that's important. This is what the, the Bridges system actually helps to do, and actually create some of those things in the middle there from things like fraud management, predictive medicine, that we talked about machine learning, drug discovery. So these are important blend of the HPC domain as well as the big data domain. And these are things that resonate. Again, I travel around the world. I talk to a lot of different industries. These are things that are resonating around the world. How do we bring those, those things together? And so lots and lots of technologies that we have here. So we've, we've already seen them. So, so here's, I, I have this chart which says this is the traditional application latency, which is which is heavily a measure of, of uh, high performance computing. And down below it's around storage volume and capability and lots of different technologies that are in here, all of which are, are represented with the Bridges system. So we're so excited to be a part of that. And as we go forward, we have a, what we call a, a data centric computer, we call the machine. But right now today with the Bridges machine, we see that coming together and again, uh, we've been very happy with a partnership with um, two great universities here that work together and a, and a great supercomputing system as well, uh, or, or excuse me, supercomputing center as well coming together for this particular effort. And I can't, I can't uh, say more about uh, some of the new technology that um, together with Intel we, we brought. Um, so we had an Intel alliance to bring uh, new technology together to, to to different fields, and, and so this is a great example. In fact, Pittsburgh Supercomputing Center is our first great example of, of uh, some great collaboration between Hewlett Packard Enterprise and Intel, and our partner in this case, uh, Pittsburgh Supercomputing Center, in bringing new technology to the marketplace. So in conclusion, um, I do want to say congratulations to um, the Pittsburgh Supercomputing Center. Uh, you know, again, you know, Bridges is, is truly innovative and, and a one of its kind in the world today, and I expect to see more of it, and, and you folks are really leaders. So again, thank you very much. Yeah, thanks, Bill. Um, yeah, HPE is a, uh, certainly a crucial partner of Intel's to deliver these kinds of solutions, particularly in uh, the research computing space. Um, so uh, uh, I'll be relatively brief. Um, Irene mentioned, I think you had used the phrase capable staff. Uh, it's abundantly clear to me, I think many others at Intel who have relationships uh, with PSC that, um, yeah, from top to bottom, there's uh, there's not only capability, there's discipline, there's focus, there's enthusiasm, there's exuberance, really, in terms of for technology um, and science in general. Um, it, perhaps uh, an example of this exuberance is, uh, is, is, a, is a story from a conference some, not too many years back, I want to say maybe two or three years back, um, to a few select um, customers of ours. Uh, we were showing at a conference in a, in a, in a tucked away, very dark hallway, uh, some, some, some technology that was around the corner. Um, this was a, a, a new switch technology that we had a black blanket over. Someone could have stumbled across it at the conference. Uh, I'm not sure why we kept it there. But anyway, um, uh, we felt compelled, and I think there was mutual interest to, to show this to the leadership at PSC. And, and, and as I recall, it was almost like a kid in a candy store. It was like, okay, so can we just take this back with us to Pittsburgh and te start testing this now? <laughs> Of course, uh, barely had the heart to tell them that there was, it was, it was the chassis. <laughs> there was just nothing inside of it just yet. <laughs> there were no uh, circuit boards or silicon or switch ASICs just yet, but uh, those eventually got here. <laughs> um, so anyway, um, it's 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 been an absolute honor and thrill to be a part of the system planning uh, from the get-go, going back three years or so. 
Um, and I'd like to thank P PSC leadership and staff for having the confidence in Intel and Intel architecture. Um, we're pleased to have delivered that architecture um, and look forward to seeing what continued scientific discoveries are achieved with, with Bridges. Um, so um, thanks again, and, and we appreciate the invite. Yeah, thank you, Chris. So we have a few minutes left. I would just like to try to share with you if I if I get lucky here, I'm always going to wing it. Um, what Bridges actually looks like. So from the afternoon session, I'm not going to be too adventurous. So the system is very different from a traditional supercomputer. The way you see here is basically the way it is wired together. And so for those that are not familiar with the way these are built, on the bottom we have 800 nodes. These are 800 individual computers. Each one is powered by Intel CPUs, um, 28 processing cores each, a tremendous amount of capacity down there. Um, so that's these, this area. Everything in the middle. This is Omnipath Interconnect Framework that we talked about from Intel. This is a new fabric that we believe is the best possible interconnection network that we can have today. And strategically, it's very important moving forward. This will be going natively into future Xeon CPUs and Xeon Phi accelerators. And so this will allow very tight coupling, tremendous optimizations in the way we move data throughout a large computing resource. And that's critical to the things that Bill mentioned with how do we get value out of data. Up on top, we have everything else. There are 42 of these nodes. These are the huge HPE DL580 nodes with three terabytes of RAM each. These are fundamentally enabling. These are letting people do genome sequence analyses that have never been done before. And then there are four nodes up here in orange that are 12 terabytes of RAM each. And that's RAM, not disk. And so together, these kinds of nodes are letting people to tackle really important problems. One example of that is in what is called metagenomics. We all heard about the Human Genome Sequencing Project. It was a big thing back in the day. Our genome has three billion base pairs. Um, that sounds like a lot. This is solving a big jigsaw puzzle, trying to put short sequences of 1,500 base pairs together and figure out that whole sequence of three billion. That's hard. Most of those applications need these large nodes. They need large RAM. What's new is solving much more complicated problems. It's called metagenomics. And the deal with metagenomics is that rather than saying, I have a human, I'd like to find their genome, it's saying, I have an environmental sample. I don't know what lives there, but I'd like to find out everything at once because I can't separate it. Even if I separated it, I can't culture it independently. One example of that that we'll just show here because I think it's really interesting and exciting is from researchers at University of Georgia. We've heard a lot about how important University of Pittsburgh and Carnegie Mellon are to PSC. But it is national also. In this case, these researchers are looking at the metagenome of the human gut, uh, what lives inside of us. We know that's very important for many me medical conditions, for the way we assimilate drugs, for different patients' response to different oral medications. In this case, you're looking at patients with type 2 diabetes versus those who do not. Now, because we're looking at the whole ecosystem of the human gut, this is much more complicated than the human genome. True, they're bacteria. They're much simpler than us. But there are a lot of them, hundreds or thousands. And so that metagenome, instead of being 3 billion base pairs, is 378 billion base pairs. That's over 120 times more complicated than a human. And they managed to do this using only 16 hours on bridges. The implications here are moving toward understanding how this collection of species in our gut are influenced by diabetes, and in turn, how they go back and influence the, the disease itself. Um, this can speak to therapies, possible future cures, and this is just one example. 
things get much more complicated. Environmentally, here's an example where we have 1.6 trillion base pairs. Many people feel that soil is the most complicated metagenome because there's so many species of bacteria in soil. This in key is critical to improving agriculture, crop yields, drought resistance, all of these things that we need to sustain 7 billion people moving forward. In this case, you're looking at an oil sands tailing pond. Look at the way this microbiome can be tailored to do oil remediation. And so these are just two examples I want to highlight in this morning's session of ways you're using, people are using the really remarkable capabilities of bridges to do things they just can't do anywhere else. Um, other examples are genomics. Um, the causal web, I will just bring up once here um, because I know some of you are not staying for the afternoon. This is one example that people have told me really gets through to highlight the way that different pieces of bridges are being used. Now, you remember we said we have all these different, we have the small nodes, we have medium memory, with three terabytes, the large with 12 terabytes. We have storage, which is tightly coupled in with everything in white. Rather than traditional, we have compute over here, storage over there, connected by a wire. Everything is tightly meshed. We also have nodes up here for doing web services, for doing databases, very cloud-like concepts, things you need in the enterprise, things that are not traditional supercomputing. And so this example, jumping forward, is where um, Dean Cooper mentioned Craig Cooper, <laughs> also Pitt, who is the PI for this. But this, is a, this is another great collaboration. This is an NIH Center of Excellence. It's a collaboration between Pitt, Carnegie Mellon, and PSC. In here, they've developed a browser-based interface. It can run on a laptop, it can run on a tablet. It lets people do this sort of causal analysis, looking for root causes in big data over a commodity internet, communicating with Portion of bridges are not traditional web nodes, running web servers like Apache, running databases that always are persistent. They don't have to get in and get out. Talking over Omnipath, all these blue arrows, the internet, the Intel fabric to large scale storage. Their data set that was highlighted in another early presenter's talk, the Cancer Genome Atlas here is right now 1.2 petabytes. They've attached their own storage, seeing the value in attaching large storage to large compute to get even more value out of this collaboration between the universities and PSC. Those analyses now run in the large memory nodes, typically from what I've been running up to over four terabytes per run. And so these are letting people do things that otherwise never would have used these algorithms. There's a strong dissemination component helping people understand how to use them, how to run it, and getting it out to people doing research so more people can make real use of this. And so these are ways that we're democratizing access to HPC, letting people come in through a web browser, not having to become computer scientists or programmers or anything else, because honestly, they're experts in biology in this case. We should let them do that without putting barriers in their way. And so that's what we're doing with Bridges. I invite you all to come to the technical talks this afternoon from 1 till 3. Um, all of those are also being recorded on the YouTube channel. So if you can't make it, they are there. Um, following this session, on the fourth floor, we have, reset, we, we have refreshments. Uh, so please join us for those. Um, feel free to ask our staff questions. And um, otherwise, just learn to know the system and the center. Before we depart, I'd like to just acknowledge various people in the audience uh, for their ongoing support, friendship, attendance here. Among those are Dean Rebecca George of the Mellon College of Science. Um, I think we have some very interesting opportunities for continuing to advance CMU's position. Um, Al Suarez, who I just met this morning face-to-face -face from NSF. A lot of times in this field, you meet people and email you meet them in person for years. So in this case, it's much sooner, and uh, it's great to have you here. Um, Jennifer Leinbach from Pennsylvania Department of Community and Economic Development. Um, Art Levine from, was here, from <laughs> the medical school. Um, and Caitlin Lamb from U.S. Senator Pat Toomey's office. 
And so for everyone that forgot tonight, I apologize. Um, it's a big group, uh, but thank you very much for coming and please join me upstairs and for refreshments. Congratulations, Congratulations. Thank you, Barnum.